All right. All right, I would like to call to order the Wednesday, February 16th meeting, 2023 of the Pump Springs Public Arts Commission. Jay, would you do the roll call, please? Yes, Commissioner Favreau. Here. Commissioner Lesniak. Here. Commissioner Newkirk. Here. Vice Chair Armstrong. Here. Chair Pritchard. Here. We have quorum. All right. And we don't have our presentation people on Zoom or certainly not in the room. We do not. All right. And I guess we'll, we're we going to have a motion to accept the agenda as written. Um, if the Desert X people show up, we'll add them at some other point in the meeting. I make a motion to accept the agenda as written. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And now is the time for public comment. This time it's been set aside for members of the public to address the Public Arts Commission on items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the commission and agenda items that the member of the public cannot be present later in the meeting at the time the item is heard by the commission. Additionally, members of the public may address the commission on each item listed on the posted agenda at the time each item is heard. Although the Public Arts Commission values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, it generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Three minutes are assigned to each speaker. Okay, do we have any public? Three minutes for the public. No. We do not, Mr. Chair. All right, seeing that we'll move on. Uh, item number F is remarks from the chair. Uh, I was going to do a budget update and report, but I'm going to defer my comments and that report until our March meeting. Uh, so there's some further information that I want to get from the city so they can thoroughly look at the budget and the state of it. So then we can move on to G, remarks from our vice chair. Uh, okay. Uh, I've been involved in a lot of back and forth with various projects lately, and I just want to ask the fellow commissioners that part of being in the Palm Springs Public Arts Commission is creating beauty and art and in enlivening and educating the citizens of Palm Springs. But we also have this fiduciary responsibility that we need to be aware of. And so when we're putting together budgets, we need to be aware of every bit of information is needed when we do the approval. And we also need to be aware of all the ordinances of the Palm Springs Public Arts Fund, and we need to use those monies appropriately. Um, so moving forward, we tend to take a, a, a slow walk through projects, but at the same time, we're doing it to ensure that we're not doing anything of any malfeasance and everything is on the up and up before it gets to council. All right, very good, thank you, Gary. All right, I see that our guest from Desert X has arrived. So rather than jumping into item H, which is items for discussion and approval, we'll backtrack to see presentation for Desert X if Mara is available now. Thank you. And Mara, you know the drill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, I'm late. Back to back meetings with the Desert X. Thank you. Closer to the mic. Okay. Hi, I'm Mayor Glasto, Deputy Director and Programs at Desert X. Um, thank you so much for having us here today. I'm excited to share with you one of the projects that we'll be installing in Palm Springs as part of the fourth Coachella Valley based exhibition of Desert X. Um, Desert X, for those who don't know, is an international site-specific art exhibition, a public art exhibition that is free of charge to the public. Um, it's designed to bring in artists from around the world, but also locally to share with us their perspective on the desert, um, their unique perspectives as it relates to all sorts of issues that we all have shared interest in. And this year's exhibition, there are more than a few artists who are um, interested in exploring 
environmental issues and climate change issues. And so we're really thrilled to share with you this project by um by uh Lauren Bond. Oh, I should say the exhibition opens March 4th and closes May 7th. So we're about two, a little more than two weeks out. Um, but if more local, you may see some activity <laughs> at certain sites that you didn't see before, but there's a lot of construction. Um, okay, um, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so this artist project um, is, is led by Lauren Vaughn. Um, actually, the project is by Lauren Vaughn and Metabolic Studio. Um, but Lauren is an artist whose practice embraces environmental activism, and she's really interested in combining art and science, technologies like farming, um, land art projects, to be both devices of wonder, but also to offer potential solutions, um, suggest solutions for the transformation of some of um, the issues that we have. Um, and she started her studio in 2005. They're based in Los Angeles and there are a number of different like, artists and makers who work with her as part of that process. And um, she's really interested in how, how change manifests and maintains life and that we're always having to think about new tools for the way we live now. Um, if you can go to this slide, please. So this project is called The Smallest Sea with the Largest Heart. Um, she proposed this as a culmination of a lot of years of research in looking at how to make sustainable living systems. Um, but what we're really excited about is how much it investigates one of the big problems here in the Tower Valley, which is this question of the salt and sea. So, um, and, and what to do with the water there and how to think about that as a place. So what she's basically proposed is over years and years of research, she has created this technology that's actually being used in lots of other um, for-profit applications or lots of similar kinds of applications um, where we're, she's taking maybe six or 20 truckloads of salt and sea water, about 20,000 gallons, and putting them in an empty pool in uh, a hotel, so an unused hotel um, in North Palm Springs. And she's developed a process that's entirely powered by solar energy and solar panels that purifies and cleans the water. And in this process, it produces what she calls an accretion. And she's able, this is the stuff that, you know, we don't like <laughs> the stuff that makes the water not potable. And um, it basically metabolizes it into this, this, this hard material, which she has figured out a way to, to grow into the form of a whale's heart, which is really quite large. And so the project is its most visible and beautiful and magical in the evenings when the pool is lit up and you can see the heart growing over time. Um, so that process is currently underway. And um, during opening weekend, it will be beautiful, but kind of, it'll, it'll begin to, to grow and grow and grow. Obviously, the more time it's able to be installed, the, the more we'll be able to see in the evenings. Um, we're really excited to see this, this process unfold. And we have a, a, a robust plan for audience visitation, parking. Um, we've arranged, in addition to the on-site parking, I think there are about 12 spots. We've um, partnered with the hotel across the street who's providing us their lot. Um, we'll be working with um, the vendors that we work with to sort of help maintain safety and try to flow, especially during the when we know that can be a problem. But we're really excited to be able to um, show this as a project that you can visit again and again and hopefully see transform. Um, I don't know if there's another slide to look at. <coughs> okay, let's see. I'm just going to create on the same scale that I decided to start to destroy. And, and I think there's just a couple curatorial statements about um, how 
you know, the artists are in global conversation about these issues. We're thinking a lot about water. Um, what's exciting about Lauren's project is hers is offering a very direct solution to thinking about accessing clean water, but it's also making something beautiful in the process. So we do have any questions? Okay, I just want to say from a public art standpoint, I'm very excited to be able okay. to participate or consider participating in a small scale part of the of this installation. Um suppose just check to see if Vice Chair has any specific questions tomorrow. Uh, I think it's a fascinating idea. Is it going to be memorialized in any way so people can see the growth of the heart? I'm not going to be standing at the pool every night hoping oh. to see it grow. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll be documenting it yeah. over time. And the studio, um, if you go there and visit, <laughs> you don't see anything. Um, there's actually um, a whole room with a collection of that research. That, that they've done into the process of it. And that's part of what the project is wants to share is just more about this process and how it's actually a very accessible thing that almost, not almost anyone can do, but almost anyone can do with sort of basic tools. And so a lot of that's like a kind of education and a deep dive into the artist process. Um, there will always be someone on site when we visit to talk to you about that process as well. Um, and there may also be some audio components, the sound of a beating heart, um, certain lounge chairs to sit, um, and just sort of like take in, you know, kind of, I, I like how she's rethinking how we enjoy and use our pools, like how often here in Palm Springs we sit at night and just turn on the pool lights, mm -hmm. sit, kind of just take in the sounds of where we are. And so it's really Cool about this location is that you know it's a mid-century modern building. It's dilapidated. It's it's being cleaned up by her and then eventually by the owners. Um, there are new owners there, so it's kind of we're lucky to be able to use this space before it's renovated. But um, you know, really thinking about reuse in so many different ways um, and giving us a space to take time. I mean, ideally, it's not that busy, you know, <laughs> and you can, you can take time with it and sort of take in that the sound elements that she's also collecting. So she's always collecting a lot of research, and so there will be an opportunity for you to engage in that way if you're not able to see the thing itself. Um, we'll also be documenting with photography. I think there may be some time-lapse video and things. And um, of course, you know, documentation is kind of part of the process. So we're still figuring out ways to share with it, um, like the social media <laughs> and our website. So. Mr. Newkirk? Yeah, thank you. So um, <clears throat> the, the water in the Southern Sea is already a dwindling natural resource. Um, it's rapidly declining. There's like, a, it's going down by like a foot a year at this point very quickly. I'm a little concerned actually about taking even more water from the Salton Sea for a project the like this. It's all going back, but it will be clean. Oh, the plan is to put the water back? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all the water will be put back by the same tanks that took it and will be cleaned. And is that going to be like continuous through the two month run of the exhibit? Not the taking out because it's like takes a long time, right, to clean this amount of water using just solar panels. So, but by the end, it will be more clean than it was before and it will be redeposited into the city. Okay. Do you have any questions from Commissioner Lesniak? I uh, guess I have three questions. Uh, that weren't about information that wasn't contained in the proposal. Uh, the first one is it's a private property. Do you have permission from the owners or written permission from the owners to be on the property? The second question is, do you have, if permits are required, do you have permits from the city for this? And the third one is after you leave, will you dismantle the project? Yes. Actually, Mara. Yes. Yeah, Mara, I'm going to interrupt and answer the the first of those two questions. Because Matthew, pay attention to item H, number two. We are discussing to pay for the permit fee for this installation. So that's already in your packet of information. Yes, we are ready to pay that fee, but when we saw that this might be a possibility, um, a way for the city to support the project, we're holding off, but we're eager 
to um, know what the answer is so we can get that done. But yes, we have permission, blessings from the owners. They're happy that we're there fixing up some walls and um, you know the, the the state of it is 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 not bad it's not great but we're able to kind of maintain the property we actually have 24 hour security there currently um and we'll be maintaining a security presence um not even as per the owner's direction but you know our 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 interest in keeping the site safe for anyone who comes and for the neighborhood as well i actually live two blocks away so um, I talk to all my neighbors about the forthcoming project and you know, I want to make sure that we're not disturbing people. Right. Very them. good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Havo. Yes. Hi. Um, I, the only question I had was um, after it's dismantled, it sounds like it's such a beautiful project. Is there any hopes of it getting transported to the Salton Sea and this heart continuing to go? Or is it just because, I mean, it seems like it's going to clean some water. It sounds like a solution. I don't know how many solutions they have down there, but if there's an artistic one, is there any hope for, for uh, this project cleaning more water than putting it clean water back into a filthy, dirty thing again. Well, um, I think the project will go back to the studio where they can continue their work on it. So no, it won't be being installed anywhere else. And then the hotel owners want to get in and start <laughs> renovating their hotel. So, oh, I meant for the heart to be moved to the Salton yeah, Sea. No, it, it will be. And I should <laughs> say that, you know, it's not actually visible in the daytime. It's not going to have this you know, this beautiful glowing appearance. So even if it was installed in another body of water, you would kind of have to light it to be able to see it, uh, which is why the pool is, is very important. And the accretion itself, it's not like a shiny, silky kind of beautiful, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's an organic form. It's an organic material. So no um, bioluminescence is added in order for it to illuminate itself or anything. No, it's just the pool lights or whatever lights they're using to from it from okay. within the bar. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. All right. Thank you, Mara. So we will consider you to have a couple of items down in the agenda. Well, so. thank you so much for considering any and all support. We also just know your ambassadors for our public art and we really appreciate their interest and support of Desert X in whatever form it takes. And so thank you very much. Um, we have another project at Desert X, which will also be located in Palm Springs. Um, so we're just excited that we can do two projects this year in the city. Great. Thank you, Mara. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we'll move on to item H, items for discussion and approval. Number one is to consider requests from Desert Peak Energy and Wind Tech Energy LTD for reimbursement of public arts funds in the amount of $375,000 for a public art project located at 62950 20th Avenue, Palm Springs. And if the folks from Wind Tech want to come up to our chairs and offer some information. Well, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I am Fred Noble with WinTech Energy. Uh, we are the pioneer wind energy developers in Palm Springs, having installed the first windmill in 1981 that kicked off the entire uh, wind energy uh, evolution here. Uh, it is to be noted that Palm Springs, whether it's generally understood, is in fact the renewable capital of the world in terms both of the uh, wind energy technology, <clears throat> but also solar technology, uh, and now uh, massive um, uh, utility scale storage battery projects, which exist to store solar energy so that it may be used after the sun goes down. The great 
issue in the utility grid now is uh, if you're going to go to an entirely renewable future, uh, what do you do when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine? Uh, the, uh, we've worked for many years to fill that void. And uh, in partnership with uh, Desert Peak Energy <laughs> Company, which is a subsidiary of a large utility company, have uh, uh, been able to put together and uh, now constructing uh, a large storage battery project, which will be, uh, when it is uh, finished, the biggest one uh, in California. Uh, $600 million project. About two weeks later, it will be the second biggest one. There's another one under construction, which is be somewhat larger. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, understanding it was, uh, has always been that as part of this program, uh, they would do something to fund uh, cultural artifacts and help put together a history of renewable energy as it existed uh, some 40 years ago when it all started. Uh, to that end, uh, when it came time for the very first windmill to be uh, uh, removed because it was obsolete, uh, I saved it to put in story all these years. Um, uh, it is now being uh, uh, restored, interestingly, by some of the men who installed it in the first place, you know, some of whom now have walkers, but they're, they're <laughs> still here, you know. Uh, uh, time goes fly, I'll tell you that. Um, uh, and um, <clears throat> we put together a program which we thought would be uh, uh, cultural in nature. Uh, your ordinance uh, uh, defines culture as something that is appropriate as well as art. Culture is a form of art. Uh, this is the last one. This is the only uh, remaining Carter 25 kilowatt window. All the rest of them, several hundred around the country are all scrap. Um, we're going to mount it down that next to the freeway where people can, where people can see it. Uh, and we're going to put it into, back into service, not on a full-time basis. We're going to be able to turn it on for tourists and tell you the truth. We're not going to run it in high wind either. We're going to run it uh, when it... Uh, so people can see it. Um, it's not far from some of the latest windmills. It's uh, 80 feet high. The new ones are 440 feet high. The new ones produce roughly 6,000 times the power of the first one. Uh, and so it's the just position of the past and the present. Um, uh, Desert Peak Energy had expected to provide this uh, program in uh, in kind. And we have, I've donated the land. Uh, uh, we also want to uh, use some of the surplus window blades from the earlier days, uh, repurpose. Uh, we want to put the, uh, replicate the footprint of the Parthenon, because that is a classic building ratio of length to width to height that has gone around the world for thousands of years. Uh, we are going to uh, do the footprint of Stonehenge. Um, so you get Stonehenges that are ancient, you got the Parthenon. We're then going to do the uh, footprint of the uh, Agua Caliente uh, uh, tribes uh, circular meeting places. And just to cap it off, we are going to, uh, I have one giant window blade. It's like 120 feet long. And we're going to stand it up on end after it's cleaned up and artists have worked on it and make a sundial out of it and let these children who come to visit see. It, it all ties back to nature. It all ties back to wind energy, which is solar energy. It all ties back to what Desert X is doing, which is to, uh, to tie the tie nature and beauty and, and utility all out of one package. Um, when Desert X uh, or uh, Desert Peak ran into delays uh, in getting their project permitted, um, it came to pass that in order to avoid losing a hundred thousand dollars a day, they didn't have time to uh, make the arrangements with the city manager for the in-kind process, and so they paid the public art fee to the city, two hundred and seventy three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. 
which was intended to fund this project. Uh, I'm putting in 200,000 in kind for, for 575 budget. And we expect that as time passes, and, and this will be the phase one of what will evolve over time <laughs> with larger uh, uh, artifacts and, and, and uh, uh, try to save the history here. History gets lost. Um, the simple fact that we've gone from something that is 80 feet high to something that's 440 feet high, something that costs $50,000 to build, and now the new ones are 10 to 12 million a piece to, to, to capture that history, which was done here. Mm -hmm. And it went around the world. Uh, and and uh, Palm Springs needs to get credit for what it did. And that's what we're trying to do here. It's not quite you know, it's not a mural. It's, a, it's restoring a machine. It's, it's making these footprints with these these blades. Uh, we want artists to uh, decorate them as as has been done at the art museum. I don't know if you fellows have seen it, but there's a we gave them a blade some years ago, and they had it uh, painted by a respected artist, and it looked it's lovely the way it turned out. What I'm not going to have there is graffiti. Uh, but the uh, artists exist who can tie the the the, the uh, design on the blades to the earth to the to the to the green momentum, and uh, uh, and then we seek your approval uh, of this proposal. Now it's coming together relatively quickly, uh, but the last page has a, a, a bit of a drawing of what's going to look like. Um, the footprint of the Parthenon, I think, really does matter, and that's how it's set out. Interestingly, with the Parthenon, the the the, the columns are not equidistant. Uh, they are they they look equidistant from from the perspective, but they actually are are, are designed uh, very cleverly to uh, create that image, even though uh, and to do that they can't be equidistant. Uh, Stonehenge has its own interesting shape. The uh, um, uh, the the Indian meeting place is not on this drawing, but we're doing it. Uh, nor is the uh, big uh, um, sundial. And we've looked at the uh, ordinance. We've looked at the uh, uh, the. Uh, definitions of what is art and, and we find uh, very clearly in section 3.37.010 the definition that the city council finds and declares that cultural and artistic resources enhance the quality of life and that's the kickoff for your charter um, our position is that these are cultural culture is defined in two ways, it's defined as ideas, also defined as artifacts and physical symbols. Uh, we, our view is that this is certainly a uh, uh, a um, as good a symbol as you can find of the the conjunction of the industrial history of the last century with the future of of reaching. Uh, out to, to 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 the world and, and taking advantage of it without damaging it. Uh, you use solar energy, you're not burning oil. You put in windmills, and one day they leave. They arrive on a truck, they leave on a truck. I can show you areas where they've been, they're gone, it's gone back to the nature. So our view is that uh, this comes firmly within your purview in terms of your ability to approve this. Whether or not you approve it's a different matter, but you certainly have the, the ability under the ordinance to do so. So we would request that you approve this proposal and the uh, uh, the mechanics of, of funding get worked out with the city manager. The question is, is this a uh, is this a venture that you approve? And I'd appreciate a vote on it, yes or no, um, and I hope that you'll approve it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Noble. <clears throat> All right. I'll start off because I um, 
expressed my concern for this in an email to you on February the 3rd. Yes, sir. Uh, which I feel that it does not fall within the requirements to look at specifically at section 3.37070 requirement to provide artwork or pay development fee. The applicant shall be deemed to have satisfied his or her obligation under this chapter to the placement of artwork in a manner consistent with this chapter valued at the amount equal to the program allocation. Now, certainly in our art ordinance, when it's talking specifically to us as the Public Arts Commission, we can pursue cultural and educational programs. However, as a developer paying into the arts fund, I feel strongly that it's got to be specifically an art installation or a piece of art placement of artwork. Uh, I have trouble with the budget because all of it is for refurbishing and restoring windmills and placement and structures, et cetera, et cetera. And the only artist fee in the budget is $20,000. So I would like some guidance or information from our staff person, if you could. Um, because this item came to us <clears throat> on recommendation, as you said, from senior staff. So I would like to know um, specifically who the senior staff are and how they feel that this does qualify under our, our art ordinance. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, senior staff are from the city manager's office and uh, they just wanted to ensure that the request here was processed in a timely manner and um, considered by the Public Arts Commission. Uh, or, um, or its artistic merits and how uh, the Public Arts Commission views this particular project. All right, All right. thank you. All right, I'm gonna take uh, comments from the commission, Vice Chair. Uh, first, I wanna thank you for what you do. I think that solar and, and wind and natural energy is the way to go. So thank you for doing that. Um, and I'm in support of this concept I'm not sure this concept is all public art. And I just have some questions for you that maybe you can help me with. One of the key things with public art is that it is open to the public for 18 hours a day. It has to be accessible to the public for 18 hours a day. And what you said, I believe in one of your documents that it would be standard business hours. So if, if anything that we fund, and again, as I said earlier, I would give money to everybody if I could, but we're sort of handcuffed by what the ordinances say. So whatever we do needs to be available 18 hours a day. We would certainly make that commitment and it's going to be installed and clearly visible from the freeway uh, and lit uh, at night if, uh, if the uh, planning department thinks that lighting works. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, um, the whole area out there draws tourists uh, and remarkably as to, to me, I remember back when uh, you know, it was just isolated, but uh, very steady flow of tourists day, you know, every day of the year. Right. But it would certainly be available around uh, the 18 hour days. Yeah. Um, one of the other key things that we, we that hinders a lot of proposals that come to us is we're only allowed to fund the art. We can't fund the structure. We can't fund refund the refurbishing of a home or a building or anything like that. So again, if you were funding from other means, and again, I support this concept. I'm just not sure the entire concept is public art. Okay. So if there was a different way to fund the entire structure and then the actual art, which is the, the artists touching the blades, that's the art, correct? No, um, can, can I answer sure. just a second? I think also, which included in your package, is uh, I gave an example of, of the Illuminaire House, mm -hmm. which is a one of a kind. It's an actually an artifact. And if you read, the, there's also a sheet here, which is the restoration of a cultural artifact, which the, the Carter wind turbine is. It's the last one. It's the only one in existence. Yep. And so under the ordinance, that is an acceptable use uh, for, for funds. Uh, of funding the 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 saving of a cultural artifact and the display of a cultural artifact. Did we fund well, a luminaire house? No. Yeah. Okay. No, but you're 
Why the issue? The funds that are in are at our discretion, but when a developer asks for the funds, their fees back, that's where I'm referring to the art ordinance where it's you have to place a piece of artwork of that value. So having a budget, having only $20,000 in this proposal for an artist, to me, simply does not meet the standard or the wordage of our Organized. But you're concentrating on the blades where we're also I'm included. concentrating on the amount of money that you're requesting back. When our art ordinance says that the that amount needs to be an art installation or an art piece. And I referred to Isabel, which is the installation of the Rowan Plaza, Michael Braun, great development <clears throat> at our September 14th meeting 2017 requested $92,500 back for his project, which cost $172,000. And being that we were seeing renderings of the actual art piece by a world-renowned artist, we refunded the money. And I say that there's, your charge is not just art, it's art and cultural. It, it's, and so, it's your charge is art. Yeah. It, no, I, well, the statute, says cultural and artistic resources. Uh, but sir, you so have to look that's just reasonable minds can right. differ, but in terms of making my record here, okay. I'd like to make it quite clear that in right. our judgment. All right, duly noted. Yeah. Move on to our other commissioners. I just have one other point. And, and we are an advisory commission to city council and we will make a recommendation to either accept or deny this proposal. Mm -hmm. um, you have the ability to go to council afterwards, knowing that city staff will then include a report with the reasons why we denied it. As that's, that's fine. So, um, as I said, I, I think it's an interesting concept. I don't think it's fundable by public art. Um, and I really wish you would be able to do something that would bring the concept you're doing closer to the majority of the people in Palm Springs. You know, if you could do some sort of display with these blades in Sunrise Park. Mm -hmm maybe in Duluth Park, where there's a lot of space. And there's so many school kids there that need to see this. And they're only going to get to go there if the school bus takes them. Well, and so one, one other point I would ask to, to help you make this a successful program is find a way to promote it more. And maybe you do have that, but that wasn't in the proposal we saw. Find a way to bring people there. And that's what will get council excited about it. The well, educational component. It's an operating device. And so I think it has to be in a wind farm, we're moving it though, so it's easy to see from the freeway. Then that's the point. All right. But All right. Uh, but I understand the position you're taking, mm -hmm. and and uh, perhaps it has to be dealt with uh, at the council level. Well, um, we're going to finish our commissioner yeah. comments, and then we'll take a vote and decide okay. where it's going to be dealt with. Commissioner Newker. Yeah. Um. I also think the project is very neat, and it's quite different from anything we've seen <laughs> since I've been on the commission, just in terms of. The approach and really the scale of it like the, the dollar amount really struck me when i first saw the proposal but then i saw what was planned and it, it started to make sense but just out of the concerns about like what is acceptable and what's not under the ordinance um yes there's only twenty thousand dollars here for specifically for artists but a lot of it is going towards the foundation refurbishing the materials to get these structures prepared and that seems to to me like that would serve the purpose so i don't have the ordinance in front of me but you're yeah. saying no yeah. uh, my understanding is it doesn't it, but it, again i yeah. i interpret it and then we allow the city lawyers okay. to interpret it when we yeah the structural it. part like that is going to be a foundation for the actual art piece that can be included in the budget and be part of the of the number, but not for a, a wind blade. Well, that or, that is actually included on that is actually listed on here. It's actually the foundation for the blades, yeah. right? But the and, blade is not piece of art, which, which is be, beyond we we couldn't put the blades. Or have the art piece if there wasn't a foundation. Right. But the blade isn't an art piece. So <laughs> but, Commissioner it, Lesniak. but isn't the blade the material for the art? That's the, the blade I mean, is an existing thing. It's not a piece of art. 
I think that's the that's the um, the the issue here. Is some people see it as art and some don't. Right. And, and uh, we're all entitled to our opinion. No, no our feelings here. It, right. it, uh, we think they're quite lovely, but we've lived with them a long time. So. Oh, I, I agree with you. They are works of art. Then. All right. Uh, so Commissioner Lesney, have me. Uh, the uh, ordinance, the, the municipal code states. Waterworks, landscaping, lighting, signage, and other objects which are commissioned from an artist as an integral aspect of a structure or site, or which are necessary for the proper aesthetic presentation and structural placement of artwork, uh, is considered as the uh, permissible expenditure. Right. Yeah, commissioned by the artist. Exactly. Commissioner Lesniak. Third time, Russell. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, when I was reading this, reviewing the proposal, I and I'm hearing a lot of my con concerns or comments reflected in the comments tonight. I didn't see a lot of art. I was wondering where the art was. And so, because um, what I'm looking at is are just the blades on this diagram. But again, I felt like the art was lacking. Um, what I want to say, though, on a positive note, I'm hearing a need to possibly rework your proposal um, regarding the art. I would also, as you mentioned earlier, I would like to bring to your attention the Jeffrey Gibson piece that you mentioned earlier uh, regarding the window blade that's at the museum. I'm aware of that piece. I'm aware that it needs to be restored and there is interest in restoring that. And going back to what our co-chair said about bringing these pieces closer to the community, when I was when I actually actually did the tour of the windmills, and when I was there, I spoke to a representative, and they said that they would be excited about bringing something into Palm Springs to motivate people to to actually or tourist visitors to go and see and take the tours. Um, so I would encourage you to rethink this a bit and possibly bring those windmills into Palm Springs um, where tourists and other visitors and the residents can have more access to them. Um, and also consider getting in touch with our museum director to talk about the Jeffrey Gibson piece at the museum. Those are my comments. Commissioner right. Favo. Yeah, the project um, sounds like a good idea, but it definitely has to be reworked the way it is presented to us right now. I can't accept it the way it is. And it would be nice to see the blade pieces in other parts of Palm Springs. Um, so just reiterating what my colleagues have said. Thank you. All right, then shall we entertain a motion? I would like to make motion that we deny the request from Desert Peak Energy and WinTech Energy LTD for the reimbursement of public arts fund for the amount of $375,000 for a public project located at 62950 20th Avenue, Palm Springs. Do I have a second? Second I'll with the, uh, uh, an edit, and that I I invite them to resubmit based on our feedback to bring this to something that we would find acceptable. We prepare, prefer a vote up or down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Second. Second. All right. Jay, can we do a roll call vote, please? And this is to deny the request. So, a yes vote is denied. Okay. This FYI. Commissioner Newkirk. Yes. Commissioner Lesniak. Yes. Commissioner Falbo? Yes. Did I? Vice Chair Armstrong? Yes. Chair Pritchard? Yes. I might say that we do have some extra surplus blades that we might be able to bring into the city, irrespective of this project. Okay. Uh, I was unaware that the blade at the Art Museum was deteriorated. I thought when the it cost a fair amount of money when they painted it, they did something to protect the paint. All right. Well, if, you, uh, if you have an idea, you're welcome to bring well, it to us. It. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. All. Thank you so much. Thank all right. Okay. We'll move on to item number two discuss an approved budget of $6,642 to support debt with permit fees 
of $1,642 and the ardent uh, fee toward the art installation of $5,000 in a vacant hotel located at 2249 North Palm Canyon at Rocket Club. And our representative from Desert X Bar Gladstone has provided ample information. So I would like us to just go straight to a vote. Make a motion, please. Make a motion. Oh, yeah, I'll have a motion to approve a budget of $6,642 to support Desert X with permit fees of $1,642, an art installation of $5,000, and a vacant hotel located at 2249 North Palm Canyon at Racket Club. All right. Second for the motion. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. All right, move on to item number three. It is discussed and approved a budget of $25,000 to support Illuminate Palm Springs, a Palm Springs life event created by Lance Palm for fall 2023. And again, they gave us a very lengthy presentation uh, at our last meeting. So if any commissioners have any questions or concerns, um, raise your hand or speak up, or we can go straight to a vote. All right, seeing none, I would like to make a motion that we approve a budget of $25,000 to support Illuminate Palm Springs, a Palm Springs life event created by Lance Palm for fall 2023. So I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, very good. Moving on to item four. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is just discuss and approve reinstallation of lawn chair art piece at the mid block of museum way between Palm Springs Art Museum and the Marilyn Monroe statue for $2,900 without a concrete pad, which is mounted directly to the, the roadway or for 13,500 for an eight foot by 16 foot by 18 inch high concrete pad. Now, just mentioned the lawn chair is the installation that was formerly the Scarlet Hotel, which is undergoing renovation. So it was removed and is now in our storage yard facility. Um, so I'm anxious for it to get out of the yard before it gets damaged or neglected or run over or trashed or whatever. <laughs> so my <clears throat> thoughts, I mean, this is both a case that I brought up because I think once we were to approve the crawler installation for the West End Museum Way. It sort of indicates that this roadway, which is now closed to traffic, is now becoming an art roadway or an art path. Um, so at least for a temporary installation, my I would be inclined for us just to do the $2,900 without a concrete pad, just to save us some money, because that way it could be a temporary piece if we find somewhere that we wanted to move it to at a later date that we've not invested a whole lot of money and we don't have a concrete pad there. Yeah. So, any thoughts? That was going to be my suggestion. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just note that I did reach out to the Hospitality Association kind of in the hope that maybe we would find another boutique hotel that would be interested in hosting uh, the piece. And that still would be my preference, but we didn't get any response. Um, so I think at least temporarily this would yeah, the solution will work. Well, yeah, for me, it's this is really sort of a temporary art installation. So if we have Forever Maryland at the east end and Crawler at the west end, then we can make the interim part become a rotating art space, which keeps the interest level high. Commissioner Leslie, do you have any questions or thoughts? Um, I'm going with Barrett's. I don't think this is the appropriate placement that I would like to see for it. I think you already know that. Mm -hmm. well, that's I have questions about putting it next to a park. Right. Pardon? Well, that's I have questions about putting it next to a park because of the, because of the homeless situation. Um, so I just question the location. I understand I'm wanting to get it out of storage, though, but I just question the location. Uh, but yeah, this location is better than the storage yard, and we could actively look for a more permanent site for it. Is is the goal to get people to interact or just to show it? I, I actually would like both, because it's a very sound piece. It's just pasture turf, yeah. so there's really nothing that can be damaged. 
I would love to see people on it doing selfies. Okay. Okay. Because I mean, I mean people we, are climbing on Maryland. So. There, there are many places in the airport area. It would look great when you're driving up to see this yeah. in some of their desert scape, but yeah, people, think, aren't, and people aren't going to be able to hop right. up on it. Yeah, because for me, positioning it so that if somebody were on the yeah. lawn chair facing the mountain, the spectacular view. Yeah. Would be, yeah. it's, it's a very good social media photo op. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned. Commissioner yeah. Favo. Yeah, I'm more concerned of the permanent placement of this piece. Um, I would love for it to be permanently somewhere instead. Of, I mean, I think it's a good idea for it to be a temporarily downtown, but what is the timeline um, we're looking at for it to be downtown? And I mean, I just think that the it should be in one of our public parks for our for our residents and then our tourists go to those parks to see right. the artwork. So it's not, everything's not just all downtown right. and it's hard. And the lawn chair is going to basically look like a Barbie chair for Maryland. So I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan. That, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it look, it start, it looks, it, uh, yeah. I'm not a fan of putting it there for a Barbie chair for Maryland. I'm not. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, coming from a, a, a place where I did temporary art installations, I would mostly would like to do these in a one-year period. So, I mean, it can certainly be less than that, but that if we're expending only $2,900, then we could move it in six months if a hotel comes forward and says, yes, we want it. So I just, I'm anxious for it to get out of the storage yard. Yeah, and I'm also yeah. anxious of, uh, Russell, just to keep in mind that, like, to have this at a public park, I think that mm -hmm. should be the end goal. Um, I just want to put that on the table that, like, you know, our residents, like, being able to have, like, a big chair like this and in their community, I think it, it'll be really uplifting. Yeah, well, that's something we can certainly pursue. And if we've got it out of the yard, people can see it and say, okay, we want it in our neighborhood. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, um, I'm going to support. Uh, Shonda's suggestion. I think this, and I, I don't have this particular spot, but it, much like we're moving the the squiggles to Demuth Park, not all art needs to be for tourists. Um, I'd be okay with if we need to move it. I'd be okay putting it in this location with a one year limit, knowing we want to find a place maybe in Victoria Park. Mm -hmm. We don't or Ruth Hardy. We don't have art in those locations yeah. at all. I've actually so, looked at Victoria Park. There's really not much. That's not landscape and grass. So well, they're actually they're putting in a four hundred thousand dollar shade structure, I believe. That's happening. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. So right. yeah, so that will be an interesting component, right. and maybe <clears throat> this green lawn chair can be under the shade structure mm -hmm. in whatever their platform okay. is. So um, I think if we think of this as phase one, where right. we put it. In this location, in the phase two, Shonda and I can mm -hmm. get it into Victoria Park. All right. Well, why don't we? Uh, oh, I can make a motion to that effect. We will do it at the twenty-nine hundred dollars with the one-year timeline. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve reinstallation of the lawn chair art piece mid block museum way between Palm Springs Art Museum and Marilyn Monroe for twenty-nine hundred dollars, just to um, just the actual pavement. Um, for a period of one year. So this is February, so end of February 2024. Well, it's not going to get approved through council. For, right. If it be, so let's say yeah. March. Well, I would just say no longer than a year. So okay. From the time of placement. All, All second. All right. All in favor? Uh, I I'm not in favor. Yeah, I'm not either. All right. The motion passes three to two. I want permanence. I want that chair to be someplace right, moving, fabulous. Moving on to item <laughs> age five. Discussion approved budget of eight thousand five hundred dollars to move intersecting cubes from Tamarisk and North Palm Canyon to the west side of South Palm Canyon between Brewster Road and Ramon. And Commissioner Lesniak, do you want to jump in on this? Because this is the location that you considered and brought forward. Um, it's one of the locations. I don't mind this location. I do. I am concerned about just again the unhoused in that area. But this is opposite on the opposite side of the street where they seem to be located. Because um, I, I want want it to be 
um, abused or broken in any way because it's a beautiful piece. It's really a beautiful structure. Um, yeah, Go ahead. That's it. That's it. Oh, I was just going to say that um, because intersecting cubes is actually installed in a good location other than the fact that there's a tree beside it, which is kind of obscuring it. It's not really a pressing matter that we move it. So if we wanted to table this until March and we take a clear look at our budget and how much money we have, we might want to consider not spending $8,500 to move right now unless we've got a very specific permanent place or semi-permanent place yeah. that we wanted to live. Uh, yeah. I'm not really, I can't visualize this location, so it's not jumping out at me in a way that's saying this is must go. So maybe we do table it. Uh, yeah, I think we should table. I think the location is actually good because it's off at the, the Architectural and Design Museum, mm -hmm. and there's a few restaurants that are either just open or just about to open. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be a very lively sort of public public drawn place. So why don't we table it until March? Give it some more yeah. consideration. We'll actually have photos available. Okay, sure. Show us the Russell, can I make a comment? Yeah, if you want, if you want to give me some ideas of locations, I can do some Photoshop work on it for the next meeting. Okay. Um, and then we can look at what it visually may look like. All right. Um, everyone's agreeable. Let's just table item five until our March meeting. Sorry. Right. And moving on to item number six, discuss and approve the gift of an art piece pinwheel by artist Larry Lubau, I'm not sure how to say that, from Ann Sheffer valued at $20,000 with an installation site to be determined after approval of the gift. Um, you all have the packet photos. I think it's a spectacular piece. I've actually seen it in person um, when it was installed at uh, Annabelle's house in Andreas Hills. Forgot the name of um, so I'm certainly totally keen on it. It's, I think it would be a great addition to our public arts collection. Um, so I'm certainly in favor. Uh, Vice Chair. Yeah, I like the piece. I'm in favor. Right. I don't have any. I think it's, we just need to find a place that's appropriate. Yeah. But it's, yeah, which, piece. which we would do after the city council yeah. approves the gift of it and all of the paperwork be permanent. has been supplied. Yeah. yeah. That's possible. Commissioner Fabo. Oh, excuse me, hubs on me. Unfortunately, <laughs> oh, <laughs> my garden of daisies. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit on the fence with the pinwheels. I unfortunately in my packet, I don't see it. So I'm going to look through my packet again. Um, but as always, I'm into a place of permanence. So I rather get it approved from council and figure out where we're going to put it and not the well, other. Way. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. Because yeah, we, have to, get the, yeah. we yeah. have to get the gift yeah. approved before we can do anything. Yeah, so I'm looking to see what it is. All right, Commissioner Lesniak. I guess for the acquisition, and I would like to, I've seen it. I would like to point out too that the pin will actually does turn. Yeah, it looks like a giant one of those things that we used to have as yeah. kids that hopefully still exist in Wills. Yeah. Yeah, fun and interactive. So, all right, then I will make a motion that we accept the gift of the art piece Pinwheel by artist Larry Lebao, Lebao from Ann Sheffer Value at $20,000 with installation site to be determined after approval. Do have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Commissioner Favo, your vote? Yes, I, I I now see it. I now like it. And I now want it on my end of town. Thank you. <laughs> All right, moving on to item number seven, discuss and approve at a budget of $1,000 for art materials and outreach supplies for the 1PS picnic on March 25th, 2023. And I'll turn this over to either Commissioner Newkirk or Lesniak. And the first day that... The, God, the job that you guys did last year for the 1PS uh, picnic was superb and it's worthy of a replication. Thank you. Yes, this is basically just so that we can repeat um, the outreach that we were able to do at the same picnic a year ago. Um, that included um, 
tabling with information about um, the artist registry, the neighborhood grant program, um, a, a game that I created about locate like matching public art with its locations around town. Um, we had some really good giveaways, crowns for the kids, candy from Commissioner Lesniak. Um, so this uh, $1,000 would go to pay for uh, printing, some additional outreach supplies. Uh, we, we would still like to get an awning, which is one thing we did not have, get in time for last year's year's picnic. Well, yes, because having visited you and Commissioner Lesniak at the picnic, <laughs> you guys need shade. Yes. <laughs> the two whitest guys on the bench. <laughs> I at least had a hat on. <laughs> Commissioner Lesniak, did you want to make any comments? Uh, I'm still thinking about the two whitest guys under that. <laughs> Uh, no, I agree that we need shade. Um, I support this. I absolutely support it. I would like to ask, though, does this commission support getting the pins made that say Imagine Art here? That's something we wanted to do. We talked about this last year. Um, well, yeah, I think actually we should consider a pin that would be perhaps a different wordage if you were using it for giveaways like the Picnic 1PS. If somebody wanted to wear it, imagine art here. Maybe yeah, I it's just something I am art or something other than imagine art here. But I'm certainly up for us having little things that would act as giveaways and we do promo things for our arts commission. When I was in uh, Puerto Vallarta two weeks ago, uh, they, they do this massive mural mosaic project in downtown where they're refurbishing the town square with mosaics it's really fascinating but everybody who's wearing t-shirts that said public art is sexy <laughs> and the, the whole idea is they want people to embrace supporting and engaging with public yeah. art so something like imagine art here to me is a little inward i'd rather do something very sexy well it, I, i'm not saying we need to say you know palm springs public art is sexy right but something that is a little more broad based branding yep. of what we're doing um yeah so that's a we can consider for yeah. as soon as March if somebody comes up with a brilliant yeah. wordage thing. So, yeah, uh, with the, uh, excuse me, Russell, with the wordage thing, if I could just piggyback, if I could just say something about that, um, I think well, it well, might. The only thing is, we're not just discussing the wordage thing right now. This is just something that Lesniak sort of slid in. We're discussing the art materials for this specific party. So. Or picnic. Yeah, I'm they... discussing those specific materials for that, and and I'm I'm suggesting that with uh, getting the specific materials in the giveaway stuff, it promotes future public artists. Like I'm like the like something along the lines of becoming a part of public art or creating public art. Um, I also at the table last year. Um, there is a shade structure that Public Arts owns. It's purple and it is located at um, DeMuth Park. Uh, that particular sage structure was used uh, to do the shading for the dome for the artist there. So there is a tent, um, a pop-up that we do own and have. Okay, yeah, because I thought we did actually own one or two of them which sort of floated around town for a while. They were crystal fantasy. So whoever's in focus are art and rec liaison can determine yeah, okay, what it is and how to get it. I remember Tracy mentioning a shade structure. And I'm trying I wouldn't to, be surprised if it was hers. I just have no idea where it might be. Yeah. 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 It's uh, I, I remember a conversation about this. It was Tracy, yeah. and I did trace it. Um, Crystal Fantasy downtown has no idea about anything because Tracy had mentioned it was there. Um, and for me, any property that be, is purchased through the for the city of Palm Springs Public Arts Commission should be in a storage facility for or the public arts. It shouldn't just be out there anywhere. Uh, absolutely. So, yeah, it, I think the ones that were crystal fantasy were removed. I have no idea where they are right now. 
if there's one or if there's two. This thousand dollars does it include a shape structure? Oh yeah, that's my question. Yeah. Okay. That was, so then let's just do it. Right. So I think actually our yeah, that's... shade structure should be white. Yeah, we don't need we could have two shade structures if we find the other one. Yeah. That's okay. All right. I was thinking three because you guys are really pale. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Give us a break. <laughs> they wear the hats. Both of them wear the hats. I'm out there getting my 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 yeah. lines. All right, well, <laughs> shall we move to a vote then? Somebody want to make this motion? I'll make a motion to approve a budget of $1,000 for art materials and outreach supplies for the One PS picnic on March 25th, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. All right, moving on to project updates. Let's go through our list here. Um, Vice Chair Armstrong, do you have anything? Uh, it's it's not project specific, but it sort of is. And um, I've been liaising, liaisoning, liaising, liaising. I think it's the right phrase. Um, with the, the Parks Commission, the Airport Commission, Human Rights Commission, and uh, particularly with the city staff on certain projects. And I will say that city staff is completely, completely overwhelmed right now, particularly with a new city manager coming in. So we may not get the answers as quickly as we would like, but it doesn't mean that they're not a priority. It's just not the priority for the city staff at this moment. So um, there's a couple projects that I'm anxiously trying to get solutions on and we're slowing things down. But um, beyond that, I, I only offer, please be patient. Um, I will say that the installation of fan booty went in the airport and it went very well to the point where we are now uh, going through and doing a permanent, it's, it's permanent, Shonda, it's bolted to the floor. You'll be happy Thank to you. know. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. And um, there is a temporary sign up identifying it. And uh, we're working on doing a permanent sign that will go on the wall. Yeah. But uh, the airport staff is loves it. P uh, Russell was there and so oh, some yeah, people perfect. looking at it. A few minutes that I was there, like maybe 20 minutes, I had like three people walk up to us and said, what is this? Because the, the temporary sign wasn't yeah. there, so I got to explain the whole thing. It's totally cool. So, um, Do we have and pictures for next meeting? What? I'll get you some pictures, Shonda. Thank the, you. The, the one that Russell took one and it was, it didn't have the sign up and everything, right. so, uh, but we'll get them. Um, the, the other point I, I want to ask is that we're approving a lot of events and community events and the, these different sponsorship opportunities, which I think are amazing, and I think we should be doing these. Um, I ask that there's whatever, whoever, whichever commissioner is the liaison with that event, be present and document everything for us, which goes back to our point I was making earlier about our fiduciary responsibility. Not only are we ensuring the money is being properly used, but we're creating institutional knowledge. And I know uh, Commissioner Favreau was struggling to find out what, how much we spent at the last Black History Month event. We should have that information at our fingertips. So we don't need to keep trying to get that over and over and over again. So if we could have documentation and then follow up as almost like a mini one page report of here's what we did, here's what we were promising, here's what's going on. Which leads me to my last point. The Chalk Art Festival is coming up next month. Who is liaisoning, liaising with the Chalk Art Festival? Because I know they sort of said maybe Matthew, maybe Barrett. And I noticed on their homepage, they don't mention the Public Arts Commission whatsoever. And as part of our sponsorship, we're supposed to get involvement in that. Yeah. So what is, is the date? I'm sorry? What is the date? Uh, it's March. I forget the exact date of March. I, I can probably find it. I think I had it on my homepage. Mm -hmm. I, I don't recall it. Uh, here it is. Yeah, it is right here. It is uh, March. One second. March 18th from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Sunday, March 19th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And there's no presence of us on the on the homepage at all. Hey, Jerry, if you want to forward me or email me the contact for them, I'll get in touch with them for the yeah. sponsorship so, thing and then because we want to have a couple of commissioners judging the artwork, so we want to get all of that lined up as well. So, so and as I said, we've got a lot of these, you know, it's that we've got the Duluth Park one, the light one, all these different things. We just need to document it so that future generations mm -hmm. of arts commissioners know what we did, know what was spent, and know what was delivered as well. Right. But yeah, and that's part of our city staff, the city manager's office, 
has all of the records of what was spent, what was approved, yeah. how it got invoiced. But they wouldn't have photos of everything. Right. They wouldn't have the, that documentation. So, and we can't expect like, Jay to do all that. <laughs> so, I would no. just like to add that I've marked it down. And if Shonda or Barrett wants to do it, I'm willing to do it with either of them. That, that by doing it, do you mean we're uh, judging at the Chalk Art Festival? Judging, yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, and and, it, and uh, Matthew, it also goes to you know liaising with them now to ensure we get proper visibility of everything we were promised. Um, but it is fun. It's a great yeah. event. We just need to ensure that we get the visibility yeah. we need. I'll, I'll do that part. That's, that's the chair of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other um, Commissioner updates, Commissioner Newker? Um, no specifics, but um, I did meet with another neighborhood organization um, in the past few weeks about another grant project um, that could be coming to Sunrise Park uh, in the future. And I know that the residents of Old Las Palmas are very eager to get um, the city council approval for their project, but like I will reiterate that. Staff is very busy and we'll keep them informed of the yeah. process there. Right. Well, actually, with the old Las Palmas, did we add anything other than the 5,000? I don't recall. No, but they 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 have to raise the rest of the funds, but we let them know they still needed approval from council. For the for the, for the, for the piece itself. For the piece itself. Oh, for the piece, of yeah. course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I hear it. All right. Uh, Commissioner Favreau. Um, I had you all, I sent out uh, the next level of boxes that are going out. Um, and the boxes, um, I'm still getting those out and contacting artists and seeing where they are. There's a couple of artists that started their boxes and then they haven't finished their boxes. And there's a couple of artists that, that, um, are just, I don't know what's happening with them. They're not showing up. <laughs> so, yeah. so there's, yeah. there's that. Yeah, I had a quick look at the images. They look like really exciting boxes. So. Yeah, they're really um, fun and dynamic, and it, it it's piggybacking a little bit on um, Black History Month. Mm -hmm. I want, um, as I go on with these boxes, is also pull um, the artists for Filipino Month and uh, Hispanic Heritage Month and make sure our our city is showing the diversity that is here. So uh, that's one of the things that I'm going to make sure as I get these boxes out um, uh, more and more as it progresses that we're encompassing more people. Oh, very good. Well, you also remember to revisit the box that got the green astroturf on North Indian Canyon and Tichiba. Yes, I have that on my agenda to, to revisit. Um, mm -hmm. That particular box, um, an, another artist expressed something innovative with it. Um, okay. So I'm just working out, like since that other artist would have to redo the whole box together, I'm just figuring out if it's better to do another location um, where his box would be more visible, closer to a golf course or something, or more of a landmark. Um, so I'm I'm working that out. Okay, perfect, thank you. I guess we covered everyone. All right, let's move on to oh, one other thing about the mural of the Richard Wyatt Jr. mural. I just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, Richard Wyatt has is ill, and I am now in the process of of introducing him to a couple of artists to see which ones that he will give his blessings to, and that we can get some kind of rendering and keep on. Um, on the path of getting it to mosaic standard. So I'm still working on that. Very right, good question to Jay, if the artist changes, then do we have to revisit the whole project and budget and approval? I believe we would have to yeah. revisit the approval, uh, Mr. Chair, because the um, artist approved was for a specific individual. Right, okay. All right, so just uh, okay, so hang on, don't cut me off. Um, so that particular artist uh, was going to work with another artist in order to get it done. Does that still have to go through the approval 
um, if that artist is still involved with the project? Well, we understand, yeah, the primary artists generally work with a team. So it would just have to, the city would have to be determined or would have to determine just how much of a involvement Richard Wired is able to have. So that would be the question. And that question would have to go to city council or like, will I just have to make sure that Wyatt is still on board before we address all that? Well, I think through Jay and the city managers because the, they have a contract with Richard Wyatt. So he would have to speak to his availability, right? Yeah, I, it, it, we'll have to take a look at what's proposed uh, Commissioner Febo in terms of uh, original artist level of involvement and um, maybe have a discussion with a commission on that. And it may, you know, there may be uh, <clears throat> a tinge of uh, legal opinion involved with that. We'll ask our city attorney right. what the process should be if something changes like that. Yeah, yeah, I think we would need some guidance from city manager or, or legal. Yeah. Right. All right. Oh, so One other question or comment. Uh, I have a question, Russell, and I apologize for setting this out today, um, but I just, I found this piece of information when I was going through some stuff and it's about Crawler. And so you all have the documentation. Well, In October so of, pardon? Well, yeah, I saw them and I had no idea why we were sent yeah, in October In October of 2022, it was, we were given the information that Crawler was 65,000. And last month we voted on it and it was 126,500. Could you explain the difference? Uh, yes, certainly, because the first one was just a general estimate of what the project may cost. And then we've got the final budget from the artist Ryan Campbell, which is 126,000. That's what we voted on and approved. Okay. Okay, thanks. All right, Jay, were you going to have some comments or anything to? Um, no, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank All right. you. All right, then I would like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting of the Public Arts Commission to our next meeting, March 15th, 2023, at 5 30 in the large conference room of Palm Springs City Hall, located at 3200 East Hawkwood Way. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. 15 minutes. Leeway. Thank you. Thanks. I like these in person meetings. <laughs>